Over the last two years, more and more companies are telling employees time to return to the office, but employees all over, including employees at Starbucks, including employees at Google, are rebelling and saying, no, we want to work from home. And somehow, since the pandemic, we have decided that the gold star work experience is remote work, is working from home. But is that really the case? After the pandemic of 2020, we've somehow deemed remote work as the ideal for employees. Yet, since 2019, we have had a loneliness epidemic that is only growing stronger year after year, and remote work cannot be helping that problem. In fact, there's a lot of evidence that shows that remote work might be its largest contributing factor to this loneliness epidemic. So, is remote work really all it's cracked up to be? Or is it slowly killing us? In this case, do employers really know best? And yeah, if that question angers you, I get it. So real quick, if we haven't met, my name is Cassandra and I'm a career strategist and speaker and I wanna help you find work you love. Before we answer that question of is remote work slowly killing us, there are some things we need to just be honest about about remote work and the truth behind how popular it really is. In some ways, we hear about remote work because of the media and the media makes it out to be really popular and it has grown, but probably not to the levels that you think it has, or at least it wasn't to the levels I thought it had. So pre-2020, remote work was only 4.7% of the, pop, the, the working population. And then in 2020 and through 2021, it grew, and it grew to 61%, but that's understandable, right? Like 61% because everyone was on these work it from home orders, but the other part was probably a lot of, you know, workers at grocery stores, at fast food restaurants, things like that. And in that time, a lot of people saw the benefits of remote work, right? You had more time for work-life balance, doing hobbies, being able to switch laundry in between meetings, not having to spend money on gas or time on a commute, right? You had your time back. There were a lot of positives. Now, post-pandemic, it's hard to get a real number of how many jobs are fully remote, as most surveys, most research is including hybrid work situations in their data. Stanford did a study that showed about 25% of job postings right now are remote or hybrid, but very few are isolating those from each other in their surveys. So 25%, not quite as many jobs as what the media makes it out to be, but yet it still seems to be the thing employees want most. Job seekers are looking for remote work. This is what I hear over and over again. This is what I'm seeing on places like LinkedIn as well. People really want to work remote. And as already mentioned, there are a lot of pros to remote work. Again, saving time without a commute, saving money on gas, can do the hobbies, can have more time for a side hustle, more time with family, etc. But here's my big question. Do the pros outweigh the cons? See, remote work has one very big con, isolation. And again, that is a huge problem because we have a loneliness epidemic on our hands. What many people don't know is that loneliness is a major contributor to your overall health and longevity. Yes, loneliness can bring on emotional side effects such as you know depression and that in itself is something to worry about, but it also brings on physical effects. And those physical issues include increased risk of heart disease, stroke, and high blood pressure. You know, not anything we really want. Not to mention, it also brings on cognitive issues, like less cognitive function is a side effect of loneliness, including less ability to focus. Sort of important for your workday. Even Andrew Huberman, who is known for talking about the benefits of light, right? This guy, if you have seen any of his clips on YouTube or on shorts, reels, etc., you probably hear him talking about sunlight, how we need sunlight to like get our circadian rhythms together. He was on a podcast and they said, what are the top five things we need to be healthy and put them in order. Everyone thought he was gonna say light first. You know what he said was first? People. He said loneliness can kill you so fast. It, it decreases your longevity in this world. It's as bad as heart disease. He put finding people to combat loneliness above light, the thing that he is known to talk about all the time. 
And yeah, I spit saying that, very passionate today. And here's the thing, remote work is massively contributing to loneliness. A Glassdoor survey in 2022 asked employees about loneliness and 50% said remote work is lonely. Y'all, this is huge. And if you are a person who was working full time and the pandemic took your whole company and swung it into remote work, and so you went into the remote work environment with a whole crew of people you already knew, you probably aren't feeling this the same way. But if you're someone who entered into a fully remote situation with people you didn't know before, you're probably feeling that, well, that loneliness more so because it's very hard to connect with a team when you've never met in person. So this goes to a second remote work issue. Remote work is killing your career progression. So not only are you lonely, but that loneliness and that hard time being able to connect and identify and build relationships with your team, your coworkers, your boss, it's hurting your career progression. Plenty of research has come out in different reports saying that remote work is making it extremely difficult to build those relationships towards promotions and progressing and growing within your company and your career. Why? Because developing and deepening relationships in a remote setting is difficult. I get that this feels like kind of a no duh thing to bring up, but it does need to be examined. When you don't have that in office FaceTime, you miss out on promotions. Proximity bias is huge when it comes to promotions, being thought of to lead teams, etc. Remote work cuts out on your ability to like bump into your boss in the hallway, stop by a coworker's office to chat for a couple of minutes and learn who do I like to work with? Who don't I work with as well? It just makes work harder. Not to mention in office workers often get to experience what's called in the moment mentoring because they get those real world experiences where you bumped into each other and you solve something in that moment. And let's just be honest about this. Collaborating and innovating is different online than doing it in person. It just is. Plus, the lonelier you feel in your remote work, the less likely you are to reach out. Your loneliness can lead to lack of initiative, right? Lack of reaching out to people, and it makes you less and less productive because you have less and less motivation. The lonelier you are, the less motivated you are. And it's just this kind of vicious cycle, which leads to the last issue. On top of all of this, loneliness is a self-fulfilling prophecy. You feel lonely, so the effort to get out there, to meet new people, even online with your remote co coworkers, is harder. So then you don't do it, so now you're lonelier. It just keeps repeating. Okay, so now that we've gotten out all that bad news, here's my take on what to do. If you are currently looking for work and you have been focused on remote work because of things like saving on gas and saving time on that commute, really be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. Are those pros worth the cons and the physical toll it can take on your mental health and well-being. I think we forget that there are trade-offs with everything. And yes, having to commute somewhere can be difficult and take up time. But if it's giving you energy, if it's helping your mental health, maybe it's worth it. To me, sometimes the difficulty of one piece of an experience is massively outweighed by the benefits. And this is a this is a place where I think that could be true for a lot of us, that yes, it's a pain, yes, I'm spending money on gas, but the trade-off of being around people in my day, of connecting, collaborating, outweighs all of those cons of getting gas in a commute. And if you are happy in your current remote work situation, I'm going to bet that's because you have a thriving social life. You know, I have a friend who's worked remotely for years, pre-pandemic even, but he traveled a lot for work. He has a great family life. He's well connected in his church. They have friends outside of family because that's the other thing, y'all. Family doesn't stop loneliness. You need more people in your life than just your family. That's another video, but it's important to know you do need more people than just your nuclear family or your extended family. If, if you're going to stay in this remote work situation, you're gonna need a very vibrant social life. 
So here are some of my suggestions. And first, I'm not going to tell you the very obvious things that every article online tells you, like join a gym, take a class. Those are very obvious. I do want you to do those things, but let's talk about some of the other things we can do to maybe help with this loneliness, help with this remote work situation that we might have to be, you might be in a situation where you have to be in remote work. So if you are still looking for work and you're realizing, yeah, this remote work thing might not be all it's cracked up to be, start looking for hybrid positions or in-office positions. But when you do this, be very mindful of the commute it would give you and the amount of hours you'd have to work, right? I am not saying trade remote work for an in-office job that has you working like a dog 60, 70 hours a week. You still need to have boundaries and decide what works for you within those constraints, but be really honest about how far you're willing to commute, what kind of work you're willing to take, and maybe hybrid is a better solution than all remote or all in office, and there are a lot of those positions out there. And again, I know that tip sounds obvious, but similar to what I say in my negotiation videos, we can get so desperate that we start making exceptions for everything. And we're like, yeah, no, I can commute an hour and a half every day, or no, this job looks great. It's 10 minutes away from my house. Oh, but I have to work 50 hours, but it's totally fine. I am not saying that when you're trading remote work for in office, you should give up all your boundaries. Still have rules of what you're willing and not willing to do. And let's say you right now, you are in remote work and you're realizing you're lonely, but you like your role and you don't wanna leave it. Well, consider a third space. So third spaces are known as that place outside of your home, your office, it's the it's your cheers. It's where everybody knows your name. So is there a co-working space you can join or is there a Starbucks where you can become a regular? I've talked before and I share this story often with coaching clients because third spaces are one of my tips all the time that when I was unemployed before, I would go to the same Starbucks every morning and it was this magical Starbucks in Sherman Oaks where celebrities came in. It was just a random Starbucks. I'm not gonna give you the name. But <clears throat> first off, it was fun to see celebrities. But every morning, I would see the same people there. And when it got really busy, we wouldn't mind like sharing a table with each other and we all knew the baristas and the baristas all knew us. And it just felt super communal. So try and find that third space that you can go to. Okay, and this last tip is gonna sound extreme, but if it resonates with you, I'm gonna say this is a step you need to take. If you are feeling extremely lonely, whether you are still job searching or you're currently in a remote position, could you get a part-time job somewhere? Could you go get a job as a host at a restaurant, as a server, working in anthropology or Ever Eve or Urban Outfitters for all I care, like working retail for a couple of hours on a weekend just so that you have some staff around you, you have some other employees around you again to be in it with. You have people you have to talk to. You know, plenty of stores will let you work eight hour shifts on a Saturday and let that be it. Or let you work two nights a week, you know, two evening shifts at a restaurant and let that be it. Is it taking up time? Yes, but could it be feeding that need for energy, for people, for community? Yeah, so it might be really worth it while we figure out these next steps. I'm not gonna lie, I work remote and it is something I have considered and I'm still considering just because I want more time with more people while I still am building my own community in the city I moved to. So, something to think about I'm not saying it works for everybody, but I am gonna put it out there that it sounds extreme, but it might be the right move for you. And I fully admit that if you get one of those part-time jobs, it's not about the cash, it's about the mental well-being. It might be about the discount too. I mean, think that one through. If you're gonna work somewhere, work somewhere where you like their stuff and get the discount. But it's not about the cash, it's gonna be for feeling a part of society and your own well-being. The cash is kind of a bonus. Okay, so, Clearly, relationships are important. This loneliness epidemic is something I'm going to keep talking about because I think it is, I think number one, I mean, it's proven now, the number one thing we need in our lives are other people. Whether introvert or extrovert, we all need people, we all need community, and remote work might be hurting that. So think for yourself if that's the case. If you are trying to connect more with other people, I have a freebie for you. You can get it in the description box below. It's all about how to connect with people and start reaching out online, sharing with people that you're looking for work, that you wanna meet more people in your industry, etc. So you can get that down below and I will see you in the next one. Bye.